Hey, what's up guys? Tyler here with Secure Team. Well, it may sound like it's straight out of one of those alien invasion horror movies where you'll have these unknown creatures start falling out of the skies or appearing on the shores and in the oceans and people don't know what they are, what they came from. And in the beginning, you know, they think that it's harmless and there's nothing to it and there's nothing wrong. Little do they know. And that's kind of what this sounds like, but it really is kind of creepy. And so in this new report, there has been a discovery of these strange glowing sea creatures that have been found completely filling the ocean waters off of multiple states on the west coast, including Oregon, which actually just did a news report on this from KGW, which is the uh, NBC affiliate. So I'll go ahead and play you this clip, which really kind of sums up at least what's happening in their state and in their waters, and then we'll talk more in just a second. Of these kind of pickle looking sea creatures have been showing up in the waters off Oregon's coast is something researchers have never seen before, and now they're scrambling to find out what's going on. KGW's Keely Chalmers is live in Newport tonight at the Hatfield Marine Science Center. And Keely, a lot of these creatures have been washing ashore. Yeah, that's right. You know, scientists here say they've been getting a lot of calls from beachgoers reporting these things washing up on the beaches. Now, the good news, they are not harmful to touch. But with so many of these creatures taking over our coastal waters, scientists here want to know what's going on. Their natural color is a, this pink color like this. Inside this laboratory, oceanographer Rick Broder is working to solve a mystery. When I first saw it, I didn't even know what it was. What is bringing massive amounts of these sea creatures to the waters off Oregon's coast? These are very rubbery and kind of an interesting feel, a little bumps on them. They're called pyrosomes and are normally found far offshore in the tropics, but they started showing up by the millions off Oregon's coast last month. As an example, we had a, um, a cruise out last month where they did a, uh, a five minute tow and they collected about 60,000 of them. The creatures look sort of like a translucent pickle, but each one is made up of hundreds of individual organisms. It was kind of like, what's going on? Why now? Why are they here? Oregon State University researcher Jennifer Fisher and her colleagues shot this video of the creatures last month. We hooked up this um, GoPro camera to a net and we sent it down in the water and we were just dumbfounded at how many organisms there were. Fisher believes the warmer ocean temperatures of recent years may have brought the pyrosomes here but perhaps not for long. She points out during a research trip just last week, she found significantly fewer of the creatures. They seem to have either died or potentially moved further offshore or into a different region, but it could be something that they're just patchy and we just didn't get them on that night. Which is why these scientists will be setting out on a lot more research trips in the coming weeks to find, capture, and study these mysterious creatures and find out once and for all why they are here. Because they shouldn't be here. It's not a normal situation. And one concern out here is that if all the pyrosomes die at once and decompose out there on our coastal waters, they could end up sucking up a lot of the oxygen and that could in turn create a dead zone for other marine life. But folks here are certainly keeping their fingers crossed that these creatures just move away naturally. All right, so... Yeah, the ocean waters off of the Oregon coast, now full of strange creatures. Um, they are of a variety of something called pyrosomes. And they've seen these things before, but these particular creatures, this is something new. And this is something that they can't explain. And experts are trying to figure out why, because it's also causing a danger to the other fish around the ocean, because these things apparently eat up oxygen. And so this could cause a major disruption in the ecosystem of the waters. And so these things originally started appearing in large numbers in 2015 and grew exponentially this year, with the greatest numbers being seen in between around 30 to 100 miles offshore. And what's so scary about these weird little pickle-shaped creatures is that they, again, not only feed off plankton, but they also feed off of predators, including dolphins, whales, fish, and sharks.
And so they took this GoPro footage that you just saw in this news clip, and they've also noticed that these creatures, which don't appear to have any ability to swim or otherwise choose which direction they go, well, apparently they do, because these things have been seen by the millions in one area off the coast and then will disappear overnight and move to a different area. And we're talking about areas that are, are against the current. So we're not just talking about them floating with the current and where the water, it, it would seem that they're moving of their own volition. So it really is strange. And um, yeah, scientists who are examining them are trying to figure out what they were. And like I said before, this really does remind me of the beginning of a lot of these horror movies uh, where they discover some little entity or creature that seems harmless. They take it into laboratories and try to study it, and then it latches onto the human host and takes over their body and uh, turns out to be some sort of alien creature that was sent here on purpose. Um, and this reminds me of a really awesome film. Now, I think I mentioned this, God, it's probably been a year or two ago, but if you haven't seen it, there's a film out called The Bay. And it's actually a documentary style film. Well, not literally, it's actually a mockumentary, I guess is what you would call it. But it's shot like a documentary or found footage where this news crew is filming a news story on uh, Chesapeake Bay, which is located in uh, the small town of Claridge, Maryland. And the film is set in 2009, and this news crew is shooting there for the annual 4th of July Crab Festival. And suddenly, the townspeople start becoming sick and are exhibiting a variety of symptoms, um, which leads them to believe that something has infected them. And then they realize that there is something in the water. Something is in the bay. And well, I don't want to give out too much info, but this is one of, and I mean this seriously, and I know I say this all the time, but this is one of the scariest films I've ever seen. And it doesn't have to be gory. It doesn't have to be jump scares. What is truly scary to me are these films where in which the plot and what is happening within is something that could actually or potentially happen in real life. And that is why this film is so frightening. So it's called The Bay. It came out in 2012. I'm sure you can find it anywhere online. Check it out, all right? You may not want to swim in a river or a bay ever again, but it's totally worth it if you're bored and you have nothing to do, so check that out. And before we go today, I'd like to show you guys some new UFO footage that has just come in to me and also talk about a future video that I'm going to be doing. So firstly, we have some new night vision infrared footage that was emailed over to me by a Mr. Lloyd Delphin, who runs a YouTube channel where he has posted other night vision UFO footage and what he has captured here is two objects that are moving in formation through space that go by and then reappear, or at least two more objects in the same formation, reappear going in the same direction around a half an hour later. So go ahead and check this out. Alright, so 
as you just saw, he's scanning the sky. We can see the stars out in space. I really love this night vision footage, and I'm actually planning to get my own set of night vision goggles, but I'm trying to save up because apparently these things are expensive as hell. So when I do get them, hopefully I'll get some good footage and be able to post it to the channel. But anyway, Mr. Delphin was recording, and he noticed these two objects moving at an extremely high rate of speed that sit in a complete side-by-side -side formation. They never break formation, they never deviate, and at one point they actually move in closer to one another. And so he watches these things go by, and then about a half an hour later, he's scanning the sky, and what do you know, he sees two more objects passing overhead in the same side-by-side -side formation, showing the exact type of maneuvers that the original two did, and yeah, these are likely not satellites, because most satellites that are up in orbit take over an hour to orbit the Earth in one full orbit. 90 minutes to go all the way around the Earth, and that's, we're talking about the fastest satellites out there. Many other satellites just sit there and don't move at all. So, if these two objects were the same ones that were originally seen a half hour before, and they indeed did orbit the Earth and were passing by again, well, that would officially make them the fastest thing moving through space. So, it's very anomalous footage. Big thanks to Mr. Delphin for sending it over. I will put a link to his YouTube channel down in the video description, and you can check out his other footage. Alright, so thank you guys for stopping by today. Be sure to check out that film that I spoke about earlier, and stay tuned and subscribe to the channel, because among the multiple future videos that I have in the works, one of them is going to be on one of the most infamous UFO crashes in history, and no, I'm not talking about Roswell, and I've actually never posted a video on this specific crash, and I'm actually in talks with someone whose grandfather was involved with this specific crash, and we're going to do a Skype interview and post a video about it within the next couple of days. So look out for that, and remember to check back to the channel because half of my subscribers don't get notifications. So when I post a new video, they have no idea unless they come and look for themselves. So I post a video usually every day, so check back, stay tuned, and I hope you all have a great rest of your night.